And Mr. Vedya, if we talk about now, you know, things that are happening at DTICI. So, so what's the latest that you can share with me in terms of, you know, the technologies that you're developing and implementing for Daimler globally? Well, I think there are a lot of things going on, but one or two things I want to highlight. One is uh, we've set up a, a team for data and AI um, mm -hmm. in DTICI, which is globally responsible for driving, you know, the value of data, right? Um, this team is really, really uh, doing great. We are working with lots of, you know, businesses, functions, and teams globally to find the right set of problems that can be stored, stored using data. I think, according to me, the toughest problem in the data and analytics is to find the right problem. If you find the right problem and you have the right data with the required level of, you know, quality, uh, then the the guys who have statistics and computer science background and domain knowledge can solve that. So right now that's a big focus for us because we still think uh, there is a lot to be done and we're just scratching the surface. Uh, we've seen some initial success in that area, but I think that's one exciting area here in, uh, in DTICI. And we are also working on our next generation uh, software defined vehicle architectures um mm -hmm. and you might have seen we have a joint venture with volvo now which was announced some time back so mm -hmm. we're working to see how to how to get that in um and then uh, we're just about finishing up all the car out projects from the car out that happened three years back um mm -hmm. so this continues to be an exciting time for engineering and it right so in when, when you talk about this team that you've built for data and analytics. So what sort of application or interventions are they doing? I mean, is it on the manufacturing side, on supply chain, on uh, logistics? I mean, well, all of that. Um, but I think uh, the major wins we've had in the recent past is in the area of after sales, where we are building okay. things like pricing analytics, um, the the way to price our, our spare parts in the market based on the demand, you want to maximize profitability, you want to reduce inventory and so on. So in mm -hmm. those areas, we've had uh, really good success, uh, but we are working on what we call as the digital factory layer, which is in uh, logistics and production. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of these areas we're doing, and, and I would put it in three tiers, right? One is the foundational first principle based models, which are basically machine learning models we built. The okay. second is we bring in tools like Palantir and see how we can use them. The third mm -hmm. is we're working on some proof of concept and pilots in the gen AI space. So all three tiers of machine learning slash AI are mm -hmm. extremely important for the business. And we, we always come at it from what kind of business value this can drive. We mm -hmm. don't do technology for the sake of technology. We are mm -hmm. not technology organization or an engineering organization. So we always look at it from if it is Gen AI, what can Gen AI do to the business? Is it mm -hmm. efficiency? Is it productivity? Is it effectiveness, right? Mm -hmm. And when we build the foundational models, which is what has been the work going on for many years, we always ask what business problem are we trying to solve? So I think mm -hmm. that's been the foundation. And in all three tiers, which is building first principle foundational machine learning models, second is bringing in the tools like Palantir, mm -hmm. or third is, you know, using the latest and greatest mm -hmm. Gen AI and all the buzz around it. Uh, so all three tiers, uh, we're trying to see how we can deliver business value. Is there any, any ballpark number that you're targeting of efficiency improvement and uh, return to business? Well, that's that's the current effort that's going on in quantifying mm -hmm. the benefits and it is very difficult. For foundational models, machine learning models, I think we know how to do it, right? For pricing okay. analytics, we can see how we can price better and we're working on predictive analytics where we can predict failures and hence save cost on warranty. It is kind of okay to mm -hmm. put a number to that. But for things like Gen AI, I haven't seen any organization do it very, very objectively. Yes, there are some numbers, uh, but um, we're in the process of trying to see how you quantify that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Mm, but for foundation models, it's easier than for something like Gen AI, which is, you know, it's just just about up and coming, and it's just right. about getting into the business area. Understood. And and what what benefits are you? I mean, what are the objectives when you talk about SDVs in commercial vehicles? I mean, for the passenger vehicle side, we have enough examples of you know, of these subscription based models and whatnot. So, what's the end objective when you talk about SDV? You know, in a CV application. Right, it's it's exactly the same as passenger vehicles, but the the value delivery could be different. The features could be different. Fundamentally, software defined vehicle in its most fundamental form is it's a capability development exercise, right? Mm -hmm. You develop the capability to decouple the hardware from the software. You do away with hundreds of small computers in your right. car or in your truck, and then you develop the ability to update and create new features mm -hmm. based purely on software and deliver them over the air, right? right? So these are the same benefits. I mean, you ask anybody, these are the benefits. Mm -hmm. So right now we are in the process of, of creating the capability and also trying to figure out at the end of the decade when this capability becomes real or thereabouts, okay. then okay. what kind of differentiating features we can develop, right? Mm -hmm. And there is where the passenger car industry and commercial vehicle industry is, is different because what commercial, we are a B2B business. Nobody buys a truck because it's pretty. Or nobody buys a truck because there is a star on the truck. They buy a truck to drive, run their business. So how we make our customers more profitable and our products more, you know, durable and safe and all of that. I think there there is a very clear distinction between the the two. So we're in the mm -hmm. process of developing those concepts on how software can drive innovation. But the founding principles of software defined vehicles uh, are the same. Hmm. So is this going to remain the core area of focus for uh, the resources at DTICI over the next five years till the time it? Oh, out? absolutely, absolutely. So uh, this is going to be the focus on how to make software uh, a big differentiator and how to uh, create features which are which can be flashed over the air and we don't have to bring the trucks to the to the service centers and so on. This is going to be a focus for a, for a fairly long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the process, are you also going to expand your teams uh, uh, to, to be able to do all of this? Well, that's a byproduct of what we want to achieve as impact. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's also on the cards, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what sort of growth you're looking at, Mr. Vaidya, over the next five years for DDICI? I think this is where Anushri will button and say, we don't talk about numbers, so I will do it for her. So we don't talk about numbers, uh, either current or what our plan is, because that's not the focus either. The focus is to maximize the business value. Okay, mm -hmm. And how do we bring more and more uh, value to Daimler Truck as a business globally using engineering and technology? That's the focus. And if it means adding people, then it means adding people. Uh, but we don't talk about uh, those kind of numbers. But your key driver of growth is going to be this SDV development uh, in the foreseeable future. Well, that and IT and and mm -hmm. uh, conventional engineering. Data. So there is um, there are a lot of let me put it this way. There are a lot of engineering problems to be solved in the next five to ten years. Right. All the transformation you see in the, in the transport industry is all centered in engineering, creating new technologies, creating new products, right. finding new way of doing things. So this this is what is going to drive the business. Right. So and we are an engineering center when we understand our products, our market, our our areas very well. So we will continue to uh, grow in providing that value. So everything that we do is either making our products better or making our customers more profitable. There is no mm -hmm. third way. So it is still a huge engineering problem to be solved, and we're right at the at the epicenter of that. Mm -hmm. Right, right, absolutely. Just one last thing, Mr. Vete. How do you see the the implementation of these technologies with respect to the Indian market? You know, SDV. How do you see it evolve in the Indian context? Well, we also work with uh, our um, Indian business uh, centers in Chennai, um, and and we see that uh, being adopted in a different way than the West because 
the transport solutions are very localized, mm. right? Uh, and we we create products and sell products that the car, the the market needs, because like I said, nobody buys a truck because it's pretty, or nobody buys a truck because it's Mercedes Benz. They buy truck to run their business. So the products in India are different. They are evolving, um, and they are using more and more software. So we work with Bharat Benz uh, brand as well uh, to do what makes sense for the local product and the market. Sure. Mr. Vaidya, thank you very much. Really appreciate talking to you and uh, really appreciate your time.